In this video, we're using uh, brewing equipment from Blue Bottle. Welcome, my name is Patrick Rolf and this is Coffee with April. For this episode, we have a little bit of a different setting here. I'm actually in Kyoto, Japan. Um, just arrived from Tokyo, more or less, for the SDAJ event. And I'm super happy to be here in the Kurasu Roastery, which is really cool. They've been kind enough to feature me here for kind of my duration of stay here in Japan. And it's funny when you go to Japan because you see a lot of Blue Bottle stuff. And Blue Bottle has always been a roastery and a producer of products that we kind of wanted to feature here, but we never really did. Um, been to the stage a bunch of times, but never really bought any of their equipment. So we went to one of their beautiful places here in Kyoto and with that, I kind of decided let's buy all the gear they have and let's test it because that's something we always have been doing. So basically what we're going to do in this video is just a little bit of brewing more or less. We have some kanamui roasted in Copenhagen by us here at April. Um, we have their hand grinder, which is a collaboration grinder. Um, interesting little piece. We have obviously their brewer and we have their paper filter. So the plan is kind of to walk you through just a little bit shortly about each of the kind of features that these gear has, brew a cup of coffee, and then I'm sure we do more in-depth videos about it in the future, right? We always end up doing that somehow. So first observations with the grinder, um, small, easy to use, looks kind of clean. I mean, you have to hand it to Blue Bottle, they know how to design things, it looks really good. Um, easy to use, not really, like I'm still trying to figure out which grind size I actually have. Uh, the way I've been dialing in the grind size now, since we don't have a normal tool, so it's just randomly test brewing, so like grinding, test brewing, grinding, test brewing. Um, so I can't actually tell you exactly which setting I'm using because I haven't really figured out how they work with the settings. So interesting one, uh, but then again, I mean, the second you dial in the right grind size, you don't really have to change much, right? So I'm not really against it. And to be fair, it is a fairly cheap grinder, so you kind of get what you pay for, I guess. Um, brewer itself, kind of pretty standard. I've seen this a lot over the years, flatbed brewer, one hole in the bottom, a few kind of rims right in the bottom as well to lift up the paper filter. The flow rate is quite fast on these. Uh, part of this is also just the size of the brewer. It's actually a really large brewer, um, very tall. And whenever we have walls like this that are a little bit more narrow, you're gonna have a much faster flow rate. So flow rate here is very kind of fast and consistent. Paper filter, unbleached, always kind of interesting. Um, first observation when rinsing, actually comes out very, very smelly. So like there's a lot of paper taste. If you taste the water after you rinse, you a little bit questioning here why they went with what they did. Uh, I can also taste it a little bit in the coffees that I've been brewing as well. Um, anyhow, it's what we have to work with, so we're gonna use it. Obviously, it would be super interesting to see what happens if you pop in like an April filter or something similar as well, right? Um, so yeah, let's, let's get going and I'm gonna walk you through how we're brewing this. So grinding with this uh, clearly takes a little bit of time, right? It's a little bit of effort. Uh, it's not commandante, but it works. One of the observations is that I always have one or two beans actually stuck in the chamber here uh, that doesn't really go down into the burst head. So what I keep on doing is kind of relatively aggressively banging on it. Uh, so they actually come down and they usually have one or two beans that actually falls down there, right? And the dose I'm gonna use is 14 grams. To our standard kind of 200 gram pour, which is a little bit more coffee but that's just an observation here in general in Japan. I ended up brewing all of our coffees using more coffee than what I'm used to. Uh, I think that is just a result of the water being very different from what I'm used to. Um, not better or worse, just different. So with that, we always kind of have to adapt what it is that we're doing from a brewing perspective, right? The water temperature that I'm using sits at 93 degrees Celsius, which is also, to be fair, a little bit higher than what I'm used to. Uh, again, it just, for some reason, tastes better with our coffees when in Japan. The first pour is a classic 100 gram, so 50 gram circle, 50 gram center. And I'm gonna let that sit again for 45 seconds. And one of the benefits with updosing using a little bit more coffee is that it allows me to go just a little bit coarser as well with the grinder. Uh, and this is actually, I believe, generating quite a lot tastier coffee. You always have the issue with lower priced 
bursts or grinders like this, that they're gonna produce a lot of, lot of small particles, right? And when they do, you kind of have to offset that by grinding really coarse to make sure that you don't end up with too much small particles in the brew in general, because uh, that's gonna stall the brew and it's just not gonna end up tasting very good. So the second pour at 35 seconds as per usual, um, total 200 grams, and then I just kind of let it sit, right? Um, it's clearly a brewer that is most likely optimized for slightly larger brews than what we normally do, uh, which is actually probably a good thing even when brewing our style of brewing because what's happening is that it's actually really easy to saturate all of that coffee, right? And then of course, for those of you that actually like brewing larger brews, you can do that quite successfully here as well. I think the main observation with the flow rate on this brewer here is that we always go kind of very, very quick in the beginning, very, very slow in the end, which we find quite continuous for all of the brewers that has this kind of more narrow shape and a little bit taller. There's a few other flatbed brewers on the market that kind of would generate a very similar style of extraction. Whereas what we're looking for with the April Brewer is a lot more uniformity from start to finish in that flow rate. Um, but overall quite interesting. So we're looking at a total brew time here of about two minutes and 10 seconds. Easy. Now again, back to that paper filter, right? Because my theory here is that to be fair, Blue Baller is roasting at least darker than what April do, then you can classify that roast degree in whatever way you want to. And I think when you're working with a heavier roast style, you're gonna be less prone to kind of taste or smell the differences that that paper filter is actually doing. So the flow of the water through the paper filter is absolutely fine, right? There's no issues there. Um, but again, when you rinse it, you can smell it very clearly. When I smell the coffee, I can also kind of smell it as well. There's definitely like a little bit of a, a, a paper vibe going on to this, which is maybe not what I prefer in my coffees, but still interesting, right? So the result, what we're getting here is um, actually a fairly acidic cup of coffee. Um, I'm lacking a little bit of structure, I'm lacking a little bit of harmony, which is most likely just a combination of that grinder and that brewer. Um, obviously it, it produces a, a perfectly fine cup of coffee, it's, it's nothing wrong with it, but after brewing this coffee for, for three days at a very busy SA event in Japan, um, I know there's definitely a lot more to it and there's a lot more structure we can get out of it, right? Um, obviously there is a lot of you out there that has already used this brewer, uh, probably used this grinder as well. So we're super kind of happy to hear your thoughts on this. What's your perspective on it? Um, and if you have any recommendations for how we should use it, we're also very eager to kind of learn and hear. Uh, this was just a little bit short introduction to it. I'm going to bring this with me to Copenhagen and I'm sure we're going to revisit this um, at a later time as well. So with that, we just wanna thank you all for watching. Uh, don't forget to subscribe for the Patreon. That's again, where we kind of do more of our in-depth stuff. We're probably gonna send a few of these out as well to, to what, you know, whoever wants it at Patreon. So make sure you sign up. And uh, with that, we just wanna thank you again for watching and have a good day. We want to give a special thank you to all of our Patreon supporters. It's because of you that we are able to continue to make these videos. And we want you all to feel free to always come with suggestions and ideas on the content that you want to see uh, because we are doing this for you and because of you. Thank you from all of us here at April.